Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the genus of flowering plants called Rubecchia. Um, these are sometimes also called um, Black-Eyed Susan is their common name. Um, I have several different um, Rubecchia growing in my garden at the moment, so I wanted to talk about the different varieties that I have growing and um, the care that they require. And I'd also like to talk about the different cultivars that I want to grow next uh, season. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So Rebecca is native to um, basically a large swath of North America. It hits almost every state in the U.S. and it also stretches into Canada. Um, they are part of the um, sunflower family, so you can see the resemblance clearly. The color is very, very similar, um, but they're just a really robust um, family with a ton of cultivars. The way it's organized um, is a little confusing, the nomenclature. Because they've been in the trade for so long, there's a lot of different cultivars or what's called a cultivated variety that exist. There's primarily just a few species that are grown um, regularly, but there's so many different varieties in those few species that it almost seems like there's so many more. I grow them because of their ease um, and they have such a low care. Um, they're basically drought tolerant plants. They grow naturally in most parts of the U.S. anyway and um, they you know don't mind the um, intense sun that I give them. They don't require an enormous amount of water which is great because I'm able to save on, on watering with that and um, they also don't flinch in the triple degree weather that we've been having recently which has been rough on everything but the Rudbeckia. So I really appreciate these plants for that and they just keep growing. Um, I just keep deadheading and they just bring out more and more um, stems. One other thing that you should think about is that there's virtually no pests on these plants. Most of them are deer resistant. Um, the leaves aren't particularly attractive to um, deer, which is great. Um, not that I have deer, but I know a lot of people do um, deal with that issue. So let's go into some of the different varieties that I have growing and then um, we can talk about some of the ones that I do want to grow and the, some of the lesser known varieties. Um, the first one up right here is this. It's Rubecchia herta and then this is just the wildflower format. Um, let me make some space here. Oh, Luna. Uh. I don't know if I'm asking for trouble by having all these near Luna, but we'll find out. So this is um, this is Rebecca herta, and this is the typical wildflower format. This is one that you would kind of see on the side of the road if you're driving down the highway in the U.S. Um, they're very beautiful, very um, resilient plants. Um, they have small kind of daisy-like heads and they're a little more um, vertical than um, some of the other varieties um, that exist. They have very um, fuzzy leaves, um, almost prickly-like. The stems are kind of prickly as well. Um, one great thing is that you don't have to water them a lot. They just seem to keep bouncing back. You do have to be on top of deadheading them and because there's so many small heads, it can be a bit of a task, but um, I don't mind it. I find, him, I find deadheading to be kind of a therapeutic exercise, so I don't mind going out there, you know, maybe once a week and just, you know, deadheading a lot. These ones were grown from seed and I did sow them probably eight to ten weeks before um, the last frost that I have. Um, and when they're in the seedling format, you're going to want to fertilize them regularly, but that's about the only time that I do fertilize them. This is just brings them through to their kind of teenage stage. Um, and then they're perfectly fine after that. These are the seeds that I use. They're from Wild Seed Farms, um, Black Eyed Susan, Rubecchia Herta, just tiny little seeds, and you just kind of scatter them. Um, these are these are annual slash perennial, so they're, you can either replace them every year or you can try to see if they're going to come back to you next year. They do self-seed very easily. Um, I haven't had an issue with them becoming invasive. 
they of course they wouldn't be invasive in this area because they're um, native but I haven't seen them be aggressive I guess it's a better word for that um, they're not bullies in the garden for me and they seem to um, grow well with everything else in my area which is zone 8b you can um, just pop some seeds into the ground in the fall and they will winter over through to the spring um, that's another option as well. So if you don't want to plant them indoors and deal with lights or um, heat mats, just um, if you're in a warmer area, probably zone five and up, you can probably um, just scatter sow them in the fall and then they'll germinate, be quite small through the winter, and then they'll just, you know, blow up with growth later. But, you know, if you're in my zone, you can just do it in the spring as well because there's uh, the season is so long over here. So there's enough time for them to grow all the way to, um, you know, a nice, nicely sized plant. The next variety up is Rebecca Herta Indian Summer. Indian Summer is defined by this enormous flower. It's about five to six inches across. It's very very beautiful these are wonderful like vase plants um, statement plants one thing you have to know about Rebecca is that they're considered dirty plants in that if you put them in a vase um, they will make the water very murky um, and that can be um, alleviated by adding a couple drops of bleach but um, I usually don't even bother with that I just I quickly just replace them anyway they're, they're great plants. The one thing you have to worry about is that if you live in a windy environment, the petals can actually be so large that they can kind of look windswept or look a little messy. Um, another thing is that the tips of the flowers can get a little bit um, tattered because they're just the petals are so large. But it's not a big deal. You can just cut them and there'll be another um, flower waiting to grow. One thing, this is just my personal opinion, is that they're not like the best cottage flower plants because of the size of the flower. Um, it, I think for me, what I like about cottage gardens is that it's just a mixture of just tons of airy um, colors and flowers. These are so large sometimes that they require a little bit of a breather in terms of um, visual noise. So just be aware of that, that you know, you might require them to be, I don't know, on their own or with some other foliage that kind of counters the size and the intensity of the flower itself because it's almost like growing a sunflower right here. So next up is Rebecca Herta Denver Daisy and you can tell the one of the most um, obvious differences between this and the rest of these is that they have this dark demarcation in the middle um, that kind of spreads from the cone towards the center of the um, petal itself they're beautiful flowers obviously and they were um, the earliest bloomer for me luna psst, psst. She's obsessed with a lizard that lives outside there, so if you see her scratching the window, that's what she's doing, trying to get his attention. These were actually the very first Rudbeckia for me to bloom in the season, so they, I'm, it was really hard to even find some of these to show you, but they are a little more tattered. Um, it's really actually a cool flower at night because you'll, you'll see basically a ring of yellow and then just darkness in the middle. So it looks really interesting um, when it catches the moonlight. So Denver Daisy was named after the 150th anniversary of the founding of Denver. Um, and it was bred primarily for that occasion. But yeah, it's a great um, plant that you should consider in your bed. So now we're going to talk about a few varieties that I don't have with me, but I think are still worthy of, you know, talking about. Uh, Rubecchia herta prairie sun, like that's the variety that was used to create um, Denver daisy, which was mentioned. Um, prairie sun has a much lighter center cone to it. It's almost like a green color. Um, it does have a small like demarcation of orange in the middle but it's just, you know, you could treat it exactly like Denver Daisy. This is a great plant to add for like late season color, um, and I'm gonna definitely do that for next season. Um, there's another variety called uh, Irish Eyes, which is, looks very, very similar to um, Prairie Sun. The difference is pretty minimal in my opinion, but Prairie Sun, I mean, see, I'm getting them confused already. Irish Eyes, which is like the creepiest name in the world because I think it's like the center is like green and it's supposed to be like an Irish eyeball, weirdest stuff ever. Um, Irish Eyes has a less kind of demarcated center and the center is even more green. So if that's like your cup of tea, then like go for it. Um, but I think they're very attractive and they're really 
nice uh, soft colors so that can be good in a mixed border but not all rubecchia are going to be like shades of yellow there's a few varieties that i'm going to talk about now that are you know completely different so first up is rubecchia herta cherry brandy and like whoa obviously the biggest difference here is like the crimson color um i'm looking at some pictures of it right now and like it's crazy but like i also don't know how i would use it in like a mixed border um, I think I would probably mix it with some purples because the cone itself has a purple hue to it and I think it could be nice to connect those two. Um, it's a very very intense color and I like it and I think it'd be great for like a bouquet but you also have to consider how you're using it in like a mixed border. Also it's my opinion that like red tends to like clash with certain colors or it can be difficult to use um, dark flowers um, with other bright colors um, but like I said uh, it could be you know an excellent cut flower and I think also it might be very attractive to pollinators because of of the red color itself I know that red is certainly more attractive to certain pollinators than yellow um, next up is Rebecca Herta Cherokee Sunset and these are gorgeous so first of all like they're either like semi double flowers or like fully double flowers and they're all shades of like these beautiful like rust tones which i think are like really in right now um they're not i don't know if it's like the variety has not been like bred true or something like that but they are kind of a mixture of a mixed bag basically you know you're gonna have darker reds yellows doubles semi doubles i think it's like the variety is a little unstable but i think it could work really well with most beds they're colors that look like they you know work well with most others then they do remind me a lot of marigolds actually both the color and then when they're the double fully double format it looks totally like a marigold to me so if you like marigolds maybe you could try some of these next up i want to talk about is rebecca triloba prairie glow and these are like totally off the wall like different than the other ones as well these are like true like bicolor flowers and that they have like yellow and red both strongly represented um, there's not like a mixture or a gradient or anything it's just like boom and boom they remind me a lot of Helleniums um, I guess both the structure and the color and they also remind me of um, the Mexican hat flower i think that's ratiba rati rati i think that's ratibita ratiba ratibita i want to grow these next year i think they have a really strong cottage feel to them they look like a natural meadow the next one i have here is a different species called rubecchia fulgita this is probably one of the most popular varieties that exists and it's called goldsturm um, goldsturm means gold storm so you kind of get the idea of what it is and i'll put up a picture that shows you it's just pure yellow it's pretty amazing um gold sturm, the structure of it is a little different than the other ones um it's a little more like a candelabra and that they send like one large one here and then they have like all these different um branches coming off it it's very attractive and it tends to form more of a ball like structure they can um grow very very dense and that's the um, value of Goldsturm is that it will flower so much um, so yeah get ready to deadhead <laughs> these are not self deadheading unfortunately but it's totally worth it and you don't even have to deadhead if you don't want to um, because the cones are provide a lot of interest on their own so you can kind of keep those going so Fulgita also has a different type of leaf structure it's more like serrated here than the typical Herta Herta is like fuzzy and it kind of hurts to even touch because it's just so like prickly um fulgita is like completely smooth um it just feels like any other like herbaceous perennial it's also like a little bit like darker green too so um it's a fun plant to grow i would totally recommend it um this is one of the most popular varieties that exists and for a reason too easy and just the show is really great now back to some varieties that i don't have but do want to have Next up is Rubecchia laciniata, Erbston, Erbson, Erbst Sun. I'm so sorry about the way that I'm pronouncing all of these. I'm just like butchering all the names, but this is the best I can pronounce them. Um, Erbst Sun means autumn sun. Um, 
and I'm sure you can <laughs> correct me on how to pronounce all of these in the comments. Erbstun flowers tend to curl back almost completely and um, basically like creating like a little dome there and they grow pretty tall actually so um, they'll have like four to five inch flowers and they'll kind of droop a little bit. I definitely want some of these in my um, bed for next season. The great thing about these is that it kind of looks like the foliage stays pretty low and then they send out these like really long stalks so it almost looks like these flowers are kind of floating around. That's kind of cool and I do like that. Um, next up is Rudbeckia subtimentosa. These names are killing me uh, and the variety is called Henry Eilers. So obviously the most interesting part about this plant is like the petals themselves. Like it's so graphic and I will be growing some of these in the future. Um, the petals themselves are not actually um, that thin. They're just, I think they're basically normal sized petals that are rolled and that's how they look that thin. Um, they have a striking appearance clearly and they do look like little like fireworks exploding. So it says here that Henry Eilers the variety was discovered alongside an Illinois railroad route and introduced into the trade in 2003. So it's relatively recent. Um, it is also a more upright variety so it's kind of closer to like this typical like wildflower variety which makes sense. Um, the foliage apparently also has like a hint of vanilla to it. I don't know if that's true or not, but if I have one next season, um, you better believe I'm going to smell the foliage. Um, yeah, so that's Henry Eilers and the species is Subtimentosa, so just FYI. And finally, the last species I want to show you is Rudbeckia maxima. And Rudbeckia maxima is the one right here. This is one of the stalks from it. And it is basically the tallest Rubecchia that you can find. Um, it is sometimes called like the cabbage leaf Rubecchia or cabbage leaf um, black eyed season because of the structure of the leaves themselves. They're much larger than any of the other varieties and they tend to have um, more of a blue hue to them. You can't see it in this, um, this stock that I have right here, but they do have more of a blue hue. Um, the leaves are also very, very smooth and they have like some small like serrations here. So the structure of the plant itself is that it'll kind of like have this little small cabbage-like um, plant at the bottom and then it sends out these really long stalks sometime early April for me is when it was. Um, these stalks are really quite strong. You don't have to stake the plant at all. Um, in fact, during some of the storms that we had, the stock was almost like on its side completely and then the next day it was back to normal. So that's one of the great things about this plant is that you don't have to stake it. It's another no care um, Rebeccia just like any of the others and it does reward you with these enormous stalks. Now I actually keep these um, stalks once they're even done flowering in my bed because it provides a lot of structural interest to the mixed bed. So there's not really a reason to like take them out because it's still really interesting to me. Um, the cones are a little, much more extensive than any of the others. You can kind of see the difference there. Like, look at this for look at this difference. It's massive. This is at least like three times the size of it. Things you need to know about this plant is virtually nothing. Just plant it in the ground, and it will reward you with amazing uh, show. It's just such a fun plant, and it's kind of cool to see because it's actually it's actually taller than a lot of people. Um, but yeah, this is Rebecca Maxima and um, it's another great Rebecca. So that's pretty much it that I have going on right now. I just had all these um, flowering in the garden. I thought it'd be fun to show you the different varieties that exist, at least a few different varieties. Um, there's about like 50 or 60 other cultivars that exist um, that I didn't even touch on, but you know, they all have certain um, characteristics about some of the varieties I've shown you. I hope today you've learned that there's so many different varieties of Rudbeckia that you can find one to suit your needs completely. Um, there's some that will provide an enormous um, head of flowers that are more in a bush form or you know if you're looking for something more of a specimen flower those are there too. There's some that are enormously tall, um, there's some that are short, compact, um, they self-seed, there's annuals, there's perennials, there's some that are red, um, yellow, you know, they have the green eyes. There's so many different varieties out there that I really want to advocate for this plant because it's just so low care, so little 
um, water needed and um, it just rewards you with this really nice show that basically lasts um, for many months and for some of these um, cultivars they will last until um, the, the frost. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Rebecca. I have so much more to learn about them, but every year I'm trying different things with them. Um, and uh, I hope to see you growing some of these varieties out there. So please tell me in the comments if you grow any of these, what your favorite is and what, you, what you're kind of planning to grow next season because um, I already have a whole list of things I want to grow. Um, thank you for watching and I, I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.